All right, hey guys, hi Fred here. Um, sorry for the potato quality. Uh, this is my third time recording this video, and um, yeah, I'm I'm gonna invest in new equipment. But I just wanted to apologize. I was gonna have this out a little sooner. We did a little um, uh, what do you call it? A little poll to see which I am I should review first. And you guys said you wanted to see the Ling Long, so we're gonna do the Ling Long. Um, it's got a six millimeter micro dynamic driver. It is a PET driver. Um, it's a new driver. I it, they call it Zun X U N six mil or for like six millimeter. I don't believe it's made by KZ. I believe it's made by another company. Um, they can dispute that if they want, but I actually have an identical driver to that that I bought. That is actually um, liquid silicone, and I can't. I don't know where I put it. I have it here somewhere. I'll I'll find it. But um. But anyway. So they they were really expensive. Um, they're good sounding drivers, but long story short, I don't think KZ is actually making this driver because um, those other drivers that I purchased are identical to these. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so Ling Long, six millimeter driver. Let's take a look at the graph real quick. So we got the graph up on the screen. You'll notice uh, there's an incline in the sub base region. So they got a little bit of oomph, a little bit of emphasis behind the base. Um, it, this is a like a typical U-shaped curve, so this is like a U-shaped tuning. Um, so, so we start off here, you know, 20 hertz at the loudest, and then it descends as we move up the frequency range until we hit about 800 hertz. Um, so this mid-bass area is kind of leaned out right here, um, and then we start regaining t as we head towards our uh, pina gain region. Um, tops out at about 2.8 kilohertz and then starts moving back down um, you know four five six kilohertz uh, this 8k peak here uh, I believe it's real um, it's not bad it, we'll get into it in a little bit but it does have a little 8k peak there and then there's a um, 14 15 kilohertz uh, triple peak here and this is actually kind of nice just because it offers a little bit of air um, a little bit of sparklies up top, so so real nice, nice tuning. It's not um, not quite a V shape. It is a, a more of a U shape tuning, um, and like I said, the only thing is the um, the lower mids are kind of scooped out there. So so anyway, it comes into this uh, rather unassuming uh, brown box here. Uh, you get three sets of ear tips. Now it is a non detachable cable. You cannot remove these. Um, if we look at the other side here, where is it at? All right, so it's a 3.5 millimeter plug. Uh, frequency response. Let me just fix this real quick. I love when manufacturers do this. <laughs> so 20 to 20, so 20 to 40 is just ridiculous. Um, impedance is 25 ohms plus minus 3 ohms. Um, that's just for the driver variance. And then we have 103 uh, decibel sensitivity, which is actually pretty high. Um, pretty good at 25 ohms, so not, not a bad um, sensitivity. You can drive it from any phone or anything like that. You don't need a dongle deck or anything like that. Um, these will sound pretty much the same whether or not they're powered from your phone, from a DAP, from a, um, a DAC, anything like that. Um, from a dongle, anything it should be fine. Um, so yeah, so let's open it up. So we got this plain cardboard box, and inside we get this nice case, this little fancy case here. Um, this is a water-resistant uh, hard shell, like a clam shell case. Um, they they tout it as being like a five dollar freebie. Um, I mean, you could pick these up. They're Somewhere around there, it's like three, four bucks for the um, for the case. Um, these little halves are not glued in, so they do they do fall out. So if um, if you wanted to, you could probably like maybe put a little piece of tape in there or something, or a little piece of glue to keep them from coming out. But they're just little foam liners just to keep the um, the IMs safe. And then we got the IMs themselves here, and then we got our little user's guide. Um, just talks about the. So this is for the controls. This is if you if you had the um, the microphone version. I don't have the microphone version, so we don't need any of that. And then it's got the tips. Um, comes with silicone tips, just standard generic KZ tips. So very nice case. Case is 
very very lovely it's a nice addition it's super sturdy super durable so this this will definitely keep your IMs safe and then here we have the IMs themselves um, now they are bullet style okay so you got bullet style they are um, open open back okay and then we have these um, these dampeners in the front these old grills or whatever uh, tuning grills and then we got a silver cable here Let me just try to focus in on it so silver cable this is um, typical KZ cable that you see with all their their included cables recently um, there is no chin cinch but there is a divider there and then we have our angled uh, three point millimeter or three point five millimeter plug so um, these are a little beat up and I do apologize um, I uh, kind of opened them up before I reviewed them I added dampeners on them um, so let's get into the nitty-gritty and we'll talk about why these are here um, I do not recommend doing this to these okay do not drill holes in your units um, because you will mess up the sound they are meant to be completely sealed and if you open them up and drill holes in them um, it will change the sound for the worse not for the better so give me one second and we'll be right back all right let's get into my ratings real quick um, so I got a lot to say about these I'm going to try to say it as fast as possible because I, I want to get these reviews out a little bit quicker um, so as far as my ratings go from now on I'm going to do my ratings on like a, a letter scale so A through F um, you got A B C D E F um, just like you would in school um, so we're gonna do our ratings like that I'm gonna do it kinda like Critical does um, I think the way he does it is best so uh, so as far as tonality goes I gave these um, a B and now this is also based on price okay this is not like um, a, a ranking from like worst to least or, or best to worst okay this does not include everything I've ever heard this is just for this price range um, and and I'll get into some of the reasons why I rated them this way so um, tonality is is a B grade so not quite an A um, I gave them a couple dings just because um, they they lack a little bit of note weight um, and they lack a little bit of dynamics um, they're, they're they're really punchy they're 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 pretty fast, but they they lack the um the, like the density the note weight they they sound like a small driver so just want to get that out there um, and they also have a little bit of timbre they're a little bit on the sharp side so I just want to put that out there as well so tonality is not quite a it's not an A plus um, it's not a B plus I gave it a B so um, it's good it's it's on the better side of good but it's it's not like amazing. Um, but it is pretty good. So, and then technicalities, I gave it a B plus. Um, now, the reason why I gave the technicalities a B plus um, are because even though the stage isn't that that wide, um, and there's not much. Um, let's see, did I put? Depth? Yeah, there's no, there's like not very much depth at all to these. Um, even though the stage isn't the biggest they do have a lot of separation between instruments and the stage itself is very roomy so there's lots of space for instruments to move around um, a lot of that has to do with the the u-shaped tuning or the hollow hollowed out mids um, <clears throat> so as far as uh, the type of person who would enjoy listening to these um, it would be the type of person who uh, who's into vocals or someone who really likes their mid-range um, or someone who really likes sub bass these aren't quite bass head they're not really I wouldn't consider them a bass head I am um, but they are kind kind of close um, they have very very good sub bass um, it's very uh, it's got a lot of emphasis behind it um, it's it's very dynamic it's very textured um, it's speedy it's good it's good bass um, the sub bass is very good as you start getting into the mid bass um, you start losing energy because of the tuning now the quality is still good um, the uh, the texture and everything is very good but it's just not very loud there's not much of it and then as you get into the lower mids um, there's even less so 
So for anybody that's looking for like a, a warmer sounding IM or a thicker sounding IM, um, this might not be it for you just because these are a little bit on the thin side um, and they sound like a small driver so they, they, they lack a little bit of that, do that uh, decay and a little bit of note weight. So, All right, yeah, but other than that, so resolution is pretty good. Um, the imaging is really good. Layering's good. The stage isn't that great. It's not the biggest, but it's not bad by any means. Um, like I said, there's plenty of room for instruments to move around. Uh, there's a little bit of 3D. You will hear objects kind of moving behind the ear a little bit. Um, that is kind of more in the mid-range, so you'll hear like... Uh, you know horns and stuff like that if it's like being panned around you'll hear it behind you vocals stuff like that not so much in the treble or the um the bass but in the mid-range you will hear stuff kind of move behind the head occasionally so these would probably be good for gaming um if you're a gamer i would probably recommend them um or if you're into uh any kind of genre like um maybe dubstep or um trip hop hip hop that kind of stuff you'll probably like these because um, they do sound pretty good. Now, one big ding, and I'll say this, so, so, so we got the pros and the cons. I'm going to list the cons first. I'm going to talk about the cons, and then we'll get into the pros and talk about the pros. Um, so I gave you my, my tonal grade, and I gave you my, my technicality grade. Um, but as far as the pros and cons go, so some of the cons, um, first off, we have no detachable cable. Now these are only, and I looked them up, so they're $14.99, so they're 15 bucks. Um, the build quality is very nice, the case is very nice, um, so it's a good value. I'm not disputing that at all. Um, I think a lot of people are going to like these. I think these will appeal to a lot of people, um, and I also think there are a lot of people that, that might not care for them. Um, and I'll, I'll explain why, and I'll explain what the competitor is to these that um, some people might be interested in picking up. So, uh, as far as the cons go, no detachable cable, that's the big one. Um, you're stuck with the cable that KZ provides you. Now, this is not a bad cable. Um, it lays flat. It's pretty compliant. It's soft. Um, it does have, uh, like, micro harmonics or, or harmonics, whatever you want to call it, like when it's moving against your, your clothing. Um, you will tend to hear it in the IMs a little bit. Now, there is a way to remedy it for the most part. And I'll get into that in just a second, because um, it goes in, into this next part. But um, but yeah, so you will be stuck with the cable, um, which isn't really a ding, because like I said, it's not a bad cable, but non-detachable cable. Now the second ding, which the, um, the part that I said earlier about the microphonics kind of rolls into, are the, um, the, the IMs themselves. Now, KZ touts them as being a, um, an open back or like a semi-open back design. Um, I personally don't believe in open back designs. Uh, I don't think they're real. I don't think they exist. I don't think any IM is, is necessarily or truly open back. Um, I think there are vented IMs and there are non-vented IMs. I think there are IMs that are vented um, adequately. And then I think there are IMs that are vented to the point where they, um, they kind of seem like open back IMs or they're as close to open back IMs as you're going to get. Um, now these are completely sealed um, as far as the forward chamber goes, this little cavity up here. This is completely sealed, so no pressure can get in and out. When you push these into your ears, the pressure in your ear cavity will push on the driver and there's nowhere for that air to escape unless you kind of tilt these around and kind of fiddle with them and stuff. So I, I think that KZ should have included foam tips instead of the... Um, instead of silicone tips and here's why so there's a good amount of pressure buildup and there is also driver flex that is one of the big dings against these is that they have pressure buildup and they have driver flex and it's really really bad if you use the stock tips I highly recommend using foam tips another thing is the microphonics with the cable if you use a foam tip, it it will absorb a lot of the microphonics from the um from the cable moving around on your clothing, so that'll be less of an issue. So um, I do highly recommend the foam tips. But yeah, so these these do have pressure buildup, um, and they do um they're not vented, so that's why I, I drilled the hole because I was doing an experiment with these. But but yeah, so anybody who um has 
uh, any kind of fear or any anybody that's not that doesn't like driver flex or is against driver flex and does not want an IM with driver flex, um, you, you might want to stay away from these just because they do have a lot of driver flex. Like I said, your 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 ear tips are kind of limited. Um, you can do kind of what I did here with the VX where you can cut down a foam tip. If you want them deeper in your ears, you can just take a, a foam ear tip and cut it in half. Um, or you can use, uh, I don't have them here, but you can also use reverse star lines. I found that reverse star lines are the only tips that pretty much provided a seal but didn't hold the pressure in. Um, they were very easy to insert and the pressure would kind of escape past the ear tip and uh, I wouldn't have issues with it. But um, I would have some issues with seal, so I'd have to kind of push them in a little deeper um, to get a good seal. But yeah, so reverse star lines work well, and then foam tips are very highly recommended for these. Other than that, I'm not sure what else you could use, but um, but yeah, if, if you're using regular silicone tips, you really have to play with the fit and kind of push them in and, and kind of angle them to like let the pressure out and kind of pull on them. And um, if you have unequal pressure, one of them will sound really weird as far as the tuning goes, like you'll lose all the bass um, and you'll kind of have to pull on it and, and uh, readjust the fit. So the fit can be very tedious on these um, just because they're not, they're, they're completely sealed. So, so that's another ding against them. But yeah, that and the cable, those are the two big cons. Um, the only other con, <clears throat> which I would say isn't really a con, um, but they are a little sharp. They are a little, little sibilant. Um, so there is a little bit of sibilance and it's kind of focused in the, in the lower treble. Um, it's kind of in the treble in general. They're just a little bit sh on the sharp side. Um, they're not bad, but I know there are some people, especially people who, um, uh, do not like, um, sharp IMs or whatever, like, like people who have a, a sensitivity to treble, um, might want to be cautious with these. I, I would still recommend them for the most part. Um, but especially like if you're the type of person who has a treble sensitivity and you listen at loud volumes, I would probably stay away from these. But if you're the type of person that listens at a moderate volume and you have a treble sensitivity, these should be fine. Um, one other thing that I'll note is I have not spent a lot of time with them, like burning them in. Um, I have listened to them for probably 10, 20, 25 hours, something like that. Um, but, um, but yeah, I have not spent a long time, uh, trying to burn them in. So I can't really attest to, to if that'll help or not. Um, but I can only assume if you were to burn them in for a little while, that would probably help. Um, I actually have a theory on burning them in, um, that involves kind of putting them outside in the sun and letting them heat up and playing, uh, music through them and like, keeping your your dap or your phone or whatever in the shade um because i have a theory that the heat along with the movement would um accelerate the burn in quite a bit and you can put like you know a couple of years worth of burn in um on them in just a like a, a day's time um just from having them having them at a certain temperature now that theory is not proven but it's just um something that i've thought about um, which eventually I'll try, but anyway, so yeah, so let's talk more about sound now that we got the cons out of, out of the way. All right, so bass quality on these. Bass, the bass quality is pretty epic. Um, I'm not going to lie, it sounds pretty good, um, especially the sub bass because that's where the most energy is. Um, I mean, you guys seen the tuning, you see how, how it's U-shaped. Um, so for anybody that's a fan of sub bass, you will like these. Um, if you're looking more for like mid bass, um, they might not really um, satisfy you. But for people who are in the sub bass, the sub bass sounds pretty good. Um, now they are a pretty bright IM, so just keep that in mind. They are a little bit on the bright side, um, but the mid range quality is is pretty good. Um, details good, resolution's pretty good. Um, for the price, honestly, they're not a bad IM at all. Um, they actually sound very, very, very good. Um, but like I said, they are just a little bit on the sharp side. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's probably the only thing. And then just the venting and the, and the non-detachable cable. 
Okay, so another positive, so volume scaling is really good on these. Um, some IMs you tend to, to crank up the volume um, and the, the response changes a little bit or the, the timbre of the IM changes or they, they get pretty noisy or the, or the noise you know gets much, much louder like, like um, any kind of grain or, or sibilance or anything like that. These are pre they pretty much stay the same. Um, obviously all that stuff gets louder as you as you crank them up but it doesn't it, it's not unequal to the amount of volume that you you uh, changed so they they scale pretty well with volume and they and you can really pump a lot of power into these these actually like to be driven pretty hard um, so they do like power you can give them power they don't require it um, if you if you want to listen to them at a quiet volume or you want to listen to them at a moderate volume, um, a phone will power them just fine. But if you have a, an amp or a DAP or whatever, um, they will take power like a champ, and they do they do benefit from it. And then yeah, so for the most part, tonality is pretty good. Um, clarity is really good. The clarity is good because of the the, the tuning again. Um, just go back into it. We'll take a look at it. Um, but just because you have the mid peak here at about 2.8 kilohertz, um, they're not really shout. Well, they might be a little bit shouty to some people. They're mid forward. That's what I'll say. I'm not going to call them shouty, but I will say that they are mid forward. Um, they're definitely like a, a mid lovers. I am, um, because of this elevation in the mid range, um, it, it kind of makes them appear to be more neutral sounding, even though they are a U shaped. I am, um, just because you have that elevation in the mids there, um, it kind of balances out the the elevation in the sub bass. But but um, yeah, all in all, for 15 bucks, um, I would definitely recommend them to most people. Um, like I said, the only people that I wouldn't recommend them to are people with maybe a treble sensitivity um, and people looking for like um, a thick low um, like mid range. And just maybe someone who who um, doesn't like the sound of a small driver because, like I said, they are a six millimeter. They sound like they're a six millimeter. They're not very full sounding. Um, they lack a lot of that note weight and the dynamics that a um, like a ten millimeter would would reproduce. Um, and they also lack a bit of that tonality that a ten millimeter would produce. They're just a little bit on the hollow side. But other than that, they're good. Um, Let's see, is there anything else? Uh, yeah, resolution is pretty good. Um, that's pretty much it. I don't think there's anything else. Um, there's just a little bit of veil in the mids, but I don't know, that, that could just be me hearing that. But yeah, as far as the price goes, 15 bucks. I think a lot of people are gonna really like these. Now let me compare them to an IM that is much, much worse for the price. All right, you guys remember these? The dumpling? I think we were talking about these last year and people were talking about how much they liked them. Um, I was never really a big fan of them. I thought they sounded decent. Um, but these sound like garbage compared to the Ling Long. I mean, these sound like absolute trash. I can't even tell you how, how bad they sound compared to the Ling Long. Like these, these wipe the floor with the, the KV or the dumplings like all day long. Um, here's some of the ways that they, they stomp all over the dump, the dumpling. Um, so after listening to the Ling Long and then going to the dumpling, this is what I noticed. Um, the dumpling just sounded super bloated, um, way overly V-shaped. The mids were completely sucked out. Um, the mids sounded muffled and wonky, like it just didn't sound correct at all. Tonality was really poor. The stage was way noticeably worse. Um, just was, everything was super cramped and just bloated. Um, nothing really moved around. There's just no room on the stage at all. Um, it it ha it's got a little bit more note weight, but it's just it doesn't sound good. It just doesn't sound good. It sounds less like a smaller driver, but it just does not sound good at all. Um, the lower treble is noticeably smoother. That was the only positive that I could give these is that they were a little bit smoother than the Ling Long. Um, but that's it. That's other than that, they're they're these it's a no-brainer. And these are pretty much the same price, if not a little bit more. Um, but yeah, if you own the Ling Long and you like the Ling Long, try try the um I mean the Ling Long, I'm sorry. If you own the the um the dumpling and you like the dumpling 
try the Ling Long and, and tell me what you think of the dumpling afterwards, because I think these are, are garbage compared to the Ling Long. Um, now, for all the uh, criticisms that I did have for the Ling Long, what is an IM that is in the same price range that competes with these um, that I would recommend for the price? The only IM that came to mind that I could think about and I could not get out of my head um, is the Tanch Gym Zero. Um, if you're eyeballing the Ling Long and, like I said, you have a sensitivity to treble or you're not a fan of the pressure buildup, um, what was the other thing? I mean, they, they both don't have detach, they, they both have non detachable cables, so either way, you're stuck with the stock cables. Um, but it, for all the flaws that the um, the Ling Long has, the Zero doesn't have. Now there are flaws that the Zero have. Um, they're very minor compared to the Ling Long. Um, mostly, just you know, there's no elevation in the base. They're they're kind of neutral. Now the base still sounds really good on the on the Zero. Um, everything sounds pretty good. The, the one thing I'll say against the um, the zero is I th I'm pretty sure there's less resolution in the zero and I think the imaging is is probably I don't know it's pretty close um, the the zero has good imaging but everything is like it's very well separated but there's not much space for it to move around I think there's more space for it to move around in the in the Ling Long. Um, but then again, it's been a while since I've heard the zero. Um, but yeah, so if if you're interested in the Ling Long and you don't you didn't like some of the things I had to say, then then definitely check out the um, the Tanch Gym Zero. But if not, and you're and you're down to check out the um, the Ling Long, I would definitely recommend it. If you do not have a treble sensitivity and you're okay with using foam tips, um, I would definitely give them a try. If, if you're a fan of U-shaped tuning and you like an elevated sub bass and you don't mind a bit of elevated mids, um, then definitely give these a try. Um, I will say the one change that my graph had from these, which was a little bit different, is my graph looked um, a little bit more like Hexa. Um, if you guys were familiar with how Hexa looks, instead of, instead of kind of rolling off here, it kind of keeps going out and then the the 8k kind of peaks off to the side there that's a little bit more how it looked on my graph so instead of going down it just kind of went up just a little bit um but yeah so these these graph like almost identically to hexa except for the base the base is different um but that upper uh mid-range and treble region is is very very close to that so these are very reminiscent to something of a um, of a true theory Ola or Hexa or something like that. So, um, but yeah, I think KZ did a great job. I think they're on the right path. I didn't. I don't think they quite nailed it. Um, it's not a full recommendation, but I think they're getting close. And this is probably the best bullet. Now, that's one thing I'll say. I haven't heard a lot of bullet IMs, um, but as far as bullet style IMs go, this is absolutely the best one that I've heard um, bar none I, I don't think I've heard a better bullet style I am and and this is coming from KZ so KZ definitely did a good job um, I think they could do a little bit better by you know maybe venting the next model um, and maybe using a, a softer driver next time something that's just a little bit a little bit less aggressive um, just because like I said these are just a little on the aggressive side um, not not a lot but just enough, um, but yeah, so they, they do bite occasionally, but, but, um, but yeah, other than that, I mean, there's not much to say, they're, they're pretty good, so I'm going to pause real quick for anybody who's finished watching the review, I'm going to go ahead and take them apart, and you guys can uh, check out the insides. Alright, so this is inside the Ling Long, so... You can see inside the cavity here, there's just a little steel mesh inside. Um, you got this little little keeper, little stopper here just to keep the cable from being pulled out. Um, you have the silver conductors here. Then we have the, the back of the driver with its kind of aqua slash green PCB. Um, it's a nice little driver. It's a cute, cute little driver. 
Then we got the nozzle here. So very simple design, very very simple IM. Um, this is the other side here. I already took this side apart. Um, but yeah, so you got the conductors there. They're they're each marked with positive and negative. Um, they do that by hand at the factory because because um, both conductors are silver. There's no way to know which one's which. But um, but yeah, so let me show you guys this driver here. All right, so there we go. So this is the Ling Long driver, and let's uh, let me grab my tool real quick and I'll pry it out of here. All right. Come on. There we go. All right. So there is the driver. This is the six millimeter Ling Long driver. Cute, cute little driver. Um, here's the inside of the shell. So, like I said before, um, I added the dampener there. I drilled a hole in it. I just wanted to see what it would do. Um, but you'll notice the bore is actually very small compared to the width of the nozzle. The nozzle is really big, um, but the bore is tiny. So, let's uh, let's grab a little needle here. And we'll we'll remove this dampener. So I'm going to pull the dampener off and now the front dampener just consists of this uh, this little mesh here so it's just a simple simple mesh and then you have the um, like the steel mesh ah, sorry I'm trying to rotate this thing but it's getting away from me but yeah so you have the steel mesh on the outside and then you have the uh, you have the plastic mesh on the inside and that's part of the tuning and then on the driver here you'll notice that there is another mesh now this is the first time I've seen this I've never actually seen this before um, but yeah so there's a steel mesh there on the driver and we will just prize this open real quick all right and now there's not much to see from the inside there you can just barely make out the diaphragm I mean the hole is tiny it's just a little baby hole um, but like I said I had some drivers almost identical to this and they are um, they're liquid silicone drivers but they're super super close to this I mean they, they, they look almost identical um, but yeah I'll, I'll pull those out in just a second and I'll, I'll show you guys I'll compare those but yeah, so that's the Ling Long driver. So not bad. Um, I mean, I guess it had to be a little bit sharp for them to put another tuning filter on the uh, on the driver itself. Um, I don't know how much this this metal mesh contributes. I think this is just a part they had on hand instead of just applying the mesh. They they did it with the metal. I don't know. I'm not sure, but um, but I'll experiment with taking the metal off and trying it with and without the metal and stuff. Um, I'll try the drivers in different shells and stuff and I'll kind of report back to you guys what my findings are. But um, but yeah, I mean, the, the liquid silicone drivers that I had from this same manufacturer um, were really good. I mean, they're really expensive, but they're, they were good drivers. So, but um, yeah, I'm going to pause real quick. I'll, I'll grab those out for you guys and then I'll be right back. All right, so... I forgot I currently have my my drivers inside the um, the moon drop what is it the moon drop I don't know it's a moon anyway it's a moon drop I am um, that I put my my six millimeters in so but I have some diaphragms here that I'll show you guys real quick if I can get them to rest on my finger All right, there we go. All right, so I have three different diaphragm materials here, and don't quote me on this. This is what I believe they are. I could be wrong, um, but so for example, here we have a, I believe a mylar uh, cone, and from what I know, the mylar is like kind of like a hazy, like a plastic bag kind of look to it. Um, it's transparent for the most part, but it's more of like a hazy kind of transparent. 
see yeah you can can't really see through it completely um, but yeah so I believe that is like a mylar um, coating could be wrong if anybody wants to clarify in the uh, comments please let me know um, and then I believe I believe here we have a PET so this is like a clear pretty transparent you can actually make out you know whatever it is that you see through it so I believe this is a PET um, diaphragm here so we'll put that down and then this is a whoops Oh, come on. Sorry, these things are really, really small. Oh, shoot. Fucker. All right. So this is a, a liquid silicone uh, driver. And now this is like uber transparent. And I don't really know how to show you guys, but it is much clearer than the other two. Um, and it's really stiff and when you look at it, it's almost like a lens Like this diaphragm is really hard to deform Yeah, like it almost pops now the the coating around it is um, polyurethane. So this is PU So this would be liquid silicone plus uh, PU or polyurethane for the for the surround ring So this is a much different type of driver than the other two this is more like a traditional uh, woofer or traditional speaker but the the dome itself is the um, is the liquid silicone and these were uh, like 25 bucks for a pack of four which is really expensive um, but I have never seen a six millimeter liquid silicone um, driver before so I wanted to purchase some but anyway yeah you can see just by seeing the, the reflection of the light in there that it's like a mirror or it's like convex you see the shape yeah so I put my tweezers uh, you can't really make it out but I put my tweezers on one side and you can see ref the reflection on the other so yeah so it's like a convex like a lens almost and it's uh it's clear with this polyurethane surround ring but yeah, very, very different. Oh, yeah, you see, I just deformed it, but I had to use a ton of pressure just to deform it. So, very interesting diaphragm. Like I said, when you compare it to these, these are like super, super thin. Um, I mean, ideally, you want a, a thinner and stiffer material. So I'm not sure what the advantages would be with the liquid silicone. I assume it would just be more in like the base region. And then this should be the mylar, I believe. Yeah, this is actually like a little bit stretchy. It's almost like a rubber glove. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that is. But yeah, and then there's this last guy here and it's really really hard to deform it's really really thick so if anybody knows let me know but yeah they were expensive drivers and they, they sound really good um, but as far as the the casing goes or the shell um, they look pretty identical to the Ling Long and if I can get the, some of the glue off yeah you can see I mean they look pretty much just like that so um, but yeah, so after this review goes up, I will um, I will take a picture of the diaphragm. I'll eventually take this driver apart, and I'll take a picture of the diaphragm, and I'll show you guys under a microscope. Um, and I can compare it to these two if you guys want to see, you know, see what these look like under the microscope. But um, but yeah, so that is essentially the uh, KZ Linglong. And yeah, like I said, they did a very good job. Um, I bought another one recently. These are um, a clone of a TRN. I paid like 15 bucks for them on uh, Amazon. I don't know where the shells are. Yeah, here are the shells. Um, but yeah, and these these those don't sound anywhere nearly as near as good as the uh, the KZ. So so KZ definitely did a good job with these. But 
Anyway, yep, so tonality rating, uh, what I give them an A, and then, uh, or I mean a B, and then the, uh, the technicalities, I give them a B plus. So, pretty good in my opinion, 15 bucks, you, you really can't beat it. Like I said, the only thing that, in my opinion, that can can even compete against the Ling Long in the bullet style would be the, um, would be the Zero, the, the Tanch Gym Zero, just because it's a really good IM. But it's also not quite a fair comparison because the Tanch Gym Zero, even though they're small, they're not really a bullet style um, because they also have a 10 millimeter driver in there. So you're comparing a 10 millimeter driver against a, a 6 millimeter. Um, and they also use like a metal composite driver, whereas these are um, just PET. So. But, um, but yeah, comes with a nice case, so not bad. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Catch you later. Peace.